Do questions about the FAA aviation medical regulations make your head hurt? Do you find the privileges and their durations hard to memorize? 14 CFR 61.23 contains a lot of complex information and it can be difficult to understand. Let's simplify the critical pieces and make it easier to remember. 14 CFR 61.23 starts by describing the operations that require a medical certificate and which certificate is required to exercise which set of privileges. According to the CFR, there are three aviation medical certificates, first class, second class, and third class. First class medical privileges are required in order to participate in three types of operations. First, when performing the duties of PIC as an airline transport pilot. Second, when performing the duties of second in command of an aircraft operated in Part 121 operations, when three or more pilots are required. And finally, when you are acting as a required pilot crew member in Part 121 operations when you're 60 years of age or older. If you aren't going to be performing any of these duties, then you do not need a first class medical. Second class medical privileges are required for two types of operations. The first is if you're going to be performing second in command duties in 121 operations other than those listed as part of the first class medical. The second is when you're exercising the privileges of a commercial pilot in anything other than a balloon or a glider. Again, if you aren't going to be performing any of these operations, then you don't need a second class medical. The third class medical is required for any other activities except for when operating under basic med or exercising the privileges of a sport pilot. We'll cover basic med and sport pilot certification in another video. So considering what we've just covered and assuming that you're not participating in basic med, what is the level of medical certificate you'll need to take a practical test for private pilot, commercial pilot, or airline transport pilot? Well, we'll answer that in a bit, but first let's review the part of 61.23 that messes people up, durations. When defining durations, the FAA often uses something called calendar months. A calendar month starts on the first of the month and always ends at midnight on the last day of the month in question. For example, if a duration expires at the end of 12 calendar months and it started on January 12th, the expiration would be January 31st of the following year. Does that make sense? So how long are medical certificates valid? In general, there are two major durations. If you received your medical certificate while under 40 years of age, your medical is valid for 60 calendar months. However, if you are 40 years of age or older when you received your certificate, it's only valid for 24 calendar months. Unfortunately, that, that doesn't mean that you can exercise all of the privileges for the entire duration of your medical certificate. In each of these cases, the privileges you can exercise depend on the level of medical certificate you start with and when those privileges expire. In all cases, when one level of privileges expire, the medical will drop to the next unexpired set of privileges. This is where things get complicated, so let's look at them graphically. If you are under 40 years of age, the durations look like this. First class privileges expire 12 calendar months from the date of your examination. Second class privileges also expire 12 calendar months from the examination date. However, third class privileges don't expire for 60 calendar months after your examination. Using this chart, you can see that if you received a first class medical on January 3rd of 2020, your first class privileges would expire on January 31st of 2021. At this point, the privileges would drop to the next unexpired privilege level. Since second class also expires in 12 months, the next unexpired privileges would be third class and you would be able to exercise those privileges until the end of 60 calendar months. Now, let's look at what happens for those of us 40 years of age and older. In this case, first class privileges only last for six calendar months. Second class privileges still last for 12 months and third class privileges last for a total of 24 calendar months. Again, looking at the chart, if you're 40 or over and received a first class medical on January 3rd of 2020, you could exercise first class privileges until July 31st of 2020. Then the privileges would drop to second class until 12 calendar months from the date of your examination, in this case, January 31st of 2021. After that, privileges would drop to third class until 24 calendar months from your examination or January 31st of 2022. <laughs> Does that make sense? Is this easier to follow than the text of 14 CFR 61.23? While in these two examples we started with a first class medical, the process also works if starting with second or third class medical certificates and privileges. Just remember that when a set of privileges expire, you drop to the next set of unexpired privileges. 
Once the third class privileges expire, then you must visit your AME if you plan to continue with a regular medical certificate. If you would like more practice, I've included more questions and their answers in the comments section below. Now to answer the question from the beginning of the video. The minimum level of medical certificate needed to take a practical test for private pilot, commercial pilot, or airline transport pilot is a third class medical certificate. For more information, review 14 CFR 61.23 A3 Roman numeral 3. If you like this video and would like to help me make more like it, please consider a donation through Buy Me A Coffee. The link is in the description below, and any support is greatly appreciated. Also, please comment, hit the thumbs up, and consider subscribing. And lastly, if you're looking for more flight training information, I'd recommend watching this video next. <laughs> As always, thank you for watching, fly safely, and I will see you next time.